the internet and the world wide web. This is grade 10 theory notes, module 2.3. What is the internet? We've looked at the internet before and we've looked at um, earlier chapters in module two, but if we're trying to get a definition, it's a worldwide computer network consisting of computers and networks that are linked using telephone lines, undersea cables, satellite or microwave for the purpose of communication and sharing of resources. What is an IP address? It is a unique address that identifies a device on the internet or a local network. Every computer or smart device that connects to a network must have an IP address. IP stands for Internet Protocol. An internet protocol address, IP address, consists of four sets of digits separated by dots. Example, 192.168.130.150. What do we need to connect to the internet? Well, you need a smart device or computer, an ISP, internet service provider, internet connection, is it gonna be cabled or wireless, and software. So a computer or other internet enabled device would include cell phones, smartphones, tablets, computers, game and console, uh, smart TV. What else do we need? An internet service provider. An ISP is a company that has a permanent fast connection to the internet. These companies sell internet access and services to individuals and organizations for a monthly fee. Examples, MWeb, Telcom, SA, MTN, Vodacom, Rain, RSA Web, all the kind of ones that are selling. Okay, so what is needed to connect to the internet? Well, your textbook talks about ADSL. ADSL is starting to be phased out. Um, one of the biggest reasons for it's being phased out is that um, copper wires get stolen in South Africa. And so we need a better solution. And fiber, particularly in the Western Cape, fiber has been laid through um, much of the province. And so it's much uh, easier to get a fiber connection. Um, Telcom have phased out ADSL lines. So we're still going to learn about it because it's in your textbook and we haven't been officially told that it's permanently removed yet. So. ADSL stands for Asymmetrical Digital Subscribers Line. It is a permanent connection to the internet using a telephone line. The connection is split into two channels, one for making a normal phone call and one for connecting to the internet. The version before ADSL, so before we used ADSL, you would have had your telephone and your internet kind of sharing the same connection. And so if you wanted to connect to the internet, you'd have to pull out your telephone cable and plug in the internet cable. Um, and then you wouldn't be able to receive telephone calls while you were connected to the internet. And so one of the greatest benefits with ADSL was the fact that you could have your telephone line still connected while simultaneously being connected to the internet. Uh, fiber, much faster, um, offers speeds of 10 megabit per second, 20 megabit per second packages. Um, pretty much available in most areas in the Western Cape. If we're going to use wireless connection instead of a wired connection, we would consider cellular technology. So one of the main advantages of having a wireless internet connection is that it's mobile. You can take it wherever you are. You don't have to go through the trouble of having an ADSL or a fiber line installed. Um, this might be useful if you're renting and you don't permanently own the property, you might not be able to lay the cables. And so cellular technology is the option you're going to go with. 4G or LTE is currently the most current type of cellular technology used in South Africa. 5G is the latest, um, but it's slowly filtering down. A 4G modem or your cell phone is used to connect your computer to the internet. The web. The World Wide Web. This is a service that runs on the internet and consists of a vast collection of interlinked interactive documents stored on computers all over the world, accessed by the internet. These interactive documents are designed in a language called HTML, which you will learn how to code with later on. The language supports links to other documents as well as graphics, audio, and videos. A link from one document to another is called a hyperlink. Three terms, we've got a website, a web page, and a web server. A website consists of related web pages, so a whole lot of web pages that are together um, from the same organization would be a website. The first page of the website is 
traditionally called the home page. The web page is an electronic document on the web. It includes any page you access when surfing the web. Web pages can include text, graphics, sound, video, and links to other web pages. Web server, a computer that hosts the website and is connected to the internet. URL or web address, same thing. URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. It is an alphanumeric, so it consists of letters and numbers, address, used to identify resources such as web page, documents, and files stored on web servers on the web. A URL is entered into the address bar in a web browser. So here we've got an example. If you want to go to YouTube, we type in www.worldwideweb.youtube.com. The IP address is a numeric code that uniquely identifies a computer either on the network or on the internet. The URL is a much easier to remember link to the IP address. So I don't know what the IP address for YouTube is, but it's a series of four digits separated by zeros kind of code. You're never gonna remember whatever that code is, but if it's youtube.com, it's far easier for a person to remember. So the web address um, is often the preferred method to remember the address to a website. Web address. Many web, address, uh, web addresses begin with HTTP. So we've looked at IP, Internet Protocol. Another protocol on the internet is Hypertext Transfer Protocol, a set of rules that define how pages transfer on the internet. Uh, third one is HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, and it's used to make HTTP secure. So when accessing banking sites and sites where you're able to make purchases, e-commerce, where your um, personal details might be stored, credit card information, um, they use the HTTPS protocol. Our subdomain is www. Our domain is often the name of the company. Um, for our school, it's WINGHS. And then .com, that is our top level domain. So domain name consists of the site name, dot type of organization dot geographical location. So our school is WINGHS dot CO dot ZA for South Africa. Some places don't have the country um, codes. They don't actually use the geographic location. They could just be takealot.com, woolworths.com. And I gave a couple of different ones. Probably more important ones to remember would be .com is for commercial, .org for organization, .mobi for mobile. So um, often your cell phone version of a website is a mobile version rather than the full desktop version. .edu for education, .gov for government, and .mol for military. And the gov and the mol are generally going to be more American based. Not that you can't have a South African government website. So different types of websites. A web portal can be a starting point for searching on the web. Government often creates web portals as a one-stop shop for obtaining information about government departments, policies, etc. This is an example of a South African education portal um, that the government gives. I've got the link to go there. And they will have different support for learners, um, you can get study guides. And all that kind of information is just placed in an easy to find, easy to access um, site. SARS, South African Revenue Service, is an example of an information website. Um, they would include tax information, census data, factual information that could be used for research purpose. A news website. They contain material relating to current events, news, sport, weather, and exchange rates. Some examples, Sky News, CNN, News24. Business or marketing website, so you can make some purchases there. Um, Superbulous, Yappy Chef, Take A Lot, Wars. Um, I will point out that Kalula is currently in liquidation, so I <laughs> don't know that that's going to work out again. Personal website, you can develop and maintain your own personal website to share interests, hobbies, and life experiences with the world. Here's as an example of someone's personal WordPress, <laughs> a dad's guide to potty training, subtle art of not feeding the ducks, but pig saved my life. <laughs> so um, that's someone's personal website. Wiki, 
is a website that allows for collaborative editing and creating of content of web pages. Wikipedia is the one that most people know. It's the most famous, but it's not the only. Um, so some companies have intranets, internal networks with pages, community websites, online reference sites. So while there is Wikipedia, there's also examples like WikiHow, Wikimedia Commons, um, as some others to take note of. Educational websites, so they offer formal and informal learning by means of tutorials and simulations. Educators can use the web as an invaluable source of resource material. And yeah, they give you some examples of potential educational types of websites. Entertainment websites, probably our most favorite category. You can uh, watch online videos, music, sport, gaming, and so much more. Here are some examples of gaming and video sites, Netflix, Showmax, YouTube, Disney, League of Legends, Paladins, Disney+, Plus, um, lots. Advocacy, so there's an idea, opinion, or cause presents the views of a particular group or association. And here are some examples of um, advocacy type of websites. Web application websites, so... Um, a web application is an application that is accessed over the internet. It is not stored on your local computer. So when we access our school Gmail, our school Google Docs, Google Drive, we're not downloading that software on our computer and using it. We use it in the cloud. It's really an example of cloud computing because we're able to open the program and we use the software while we are actually in the cloud on the internet. We don't download it on the computer. It's not taking up space on your computer. And uh, if you did want to download something off there, you can download the files and then you can access them on your computer. Common examples would be Gmail, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Classroom, all of those. Content Aggregator, a website or application that gathers different web content from different online sources. Some will gather information from different sources and display it on their own website. And then some gather information from various sources and distribute it according to subscriber needs. Some examples, Flipboard, Pocket, Google News, Reddit. Browsing and searching, a web browser, software application that allows one to view and explore web pages on the web. So if I want to access the internet, I need to use a web browser to get onto the web. I would then need to type in the address of a website, um, and that would take me where I particularly wanted to go. Examples of web browsers include Microsoft Edge, Mozilla Firefox, Opera, Opera Mini, Google Chrome, Apple Safari. The one that I don't want you to mention because it no longer exists is Internet Explorer that has been removed. Microsoft no longer supports it. They have replaced it with Microsoft Edge. When you're referring to Chrome, you can refer to it as Chrome or Google Chrome. You cannot refer to it as Google because Google could be a lot of different things. You might be referring to the Google search engine, which could be the home page of your web browser, but it is not the name of your web browser. So what is a search engine? Here are some examples. So a program that is used to search for documents located on the internet by using keywords or phrases entered by the user when looking for information. Search engines use programs called spiders, robots to crawl the web and log keywords from web pages for which searchable databases are then compiled. When using a search engine, the user types one or more keywords into the search box, the database is scanned and all the websites in the database containing that word or phrase are returned. That is called a hit. Examples, we have Google, Google Search, Yahoo, Ask.com, Bing, DuckDuckGo, Yandex. Okay, so I gave you a couple of the more popular ones used around the world. Remember, um, some of these will be popular because if we take, for example, this one, um, in China, they ban the use of Google and they are a very populous country. And so their, their own search engine will be very popular because it is what is allowed to be used in the country. Tips for successful searching. Decide what you want to find. Identify keywords. Use synonyms. Check your spelling. You know, if you're looking for something in America, maybe you want to make sure you use American spelling. Use the advanced search options like date created, date changed, type of file, etc. Give credit where it is due. 
Copyright is the right to copy and publish a work. In research, you can usually use copyrighted work as long as you cite the owner or the source. Intellectual property are ideas, information, and knowledge. In university context, intellectual property can be viewed as the result and outcomes of research. It is intellectual because it is creative output and property because it is viewed as a tradable commodity. When you work for a company one day, they can put um, clauses in your um, contract saying that um, ideas that you've come up while working for them remain theirs, um, their intellectual property because they are paying you to come up with ideas and create things for them. Plagiarism, when you use somebody else's words and ideas and claim them as your own. When acknowledging a web source, you would want to make sure you include the author, the date, the title of the website, the URL of the website, the date the website was accessed by you. I'll give you an example. In your Microsoft Word, there is a um, facility where you can add your sources. So you can insert a website, and you type in all the information, and you use the bibliography bibliography feature and it will convert it to a bibliography for you and you will use this during your PAT project. Okay, this is the end.